On today's show, Jaguar Land Rover launches a new racing series for production-based EVs. Daimler launches its first all-electric commercial vehicle, and a new startup develops simulation software to test autonomous vehicles. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily, the show for enthusiasts of the automotive industry. A number of major European cities have announced plans to ban diesel and or gasoline-powered cars due to pollution concerns. But if it were up to the European Automobile Manufacturers Association, CO2 targets would be pushed back even further. The association is proposing a 20% CO2 reduction for passenger cars by 2030 rather than by 2021. It acknowledges that battery-powered vehicles will play an increasing role to meet standards beyond 2020, but they say the new target should be conditional on the market share of such vehicles. Through the first half of 2017, plug-in vehicles only make up about 1.2% of new car sales. The association also points out that a midterm review in 2025 could adjust goals up or down based on the market share for battery-powered vehicles. This is just one proposal, though. Later this year, the European Commission will release its own targets for CO2 emissions beyond 2021. Volkswagen has never acknowledged that some of its vehicle names don't resonate with U.S. customers or ever really tried to explain what they mean. Well, until now, that is. The automaker just released a series of ads that explain the name Tiguan is a mashup of Tiger and Iguana. Tiger is the same in German as it is in English, while Iguana is Leguan. Like many of Volkswagen's recent commercials, they're actually pretty good, and later in the commercials claim the Tiguan as, quote, the new king of the concrete jungle. But it's surprising that VW is just launching this ad campaign 10 years after the vehicle's introduction. On the back of announcing that it will electrify all new models by 2020, Jaguar Land Rover is launching a new racing series for production-based EVs. The vehicles, of which up to 20 will take the field, will be hopped up versions of Jaguar's all-electric I-PACE SUV and will be built by JLR's Special Vehicle Operations Unit. The Jaguar I-PACE E-Trophy Series will race at 10 locations around the world alongside Formula E and will start in late 2018. Fuso, the commercial vehicle company owned by Daimler, just launched the first series-produced all-electric light-duty truck and announced UPS as its first customer. The trucks have six lithium-ion battery packs that total for about 83 kilowatt hours and provide about 60 miles of range. The trucks can also carry up to three and a half tons. 500 units will be delivered to customers in the U.S., Europe, and Japan, and larger scale production is intended to start in 2019. Still to come, GM and BMW have very different timetables for the introduction of autonomous vehicles. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results. Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. And by Hyundai, better drives us. What a funny week it's been when it comes to predicting when we'll see autonomous cars. First, BMW told journalists at the Frankfurt Auto Show that the sensors and computing power for Level 5 autonomous cars are simply not available yet. And yet, this same week, Cruise Automation and General Motors announced that their Level 5 Chevrolet Bolt is ready for mass production. All they need is final software and regulatory approval. The first AVs are still about four years away, and they'll be used for ride-sharing, not for retail sales. But it's fascinating to see how two very capable automakers have very different views on when we'll see autonomous cars. But autonomous cars require far more testing than regular vehicles, and one way that automakers and suppliers can accelerate development is to simulate the testing. One company that makes simulation software explicitly for this purpose is an Israeli startup called Cognata. It uses computer vision and deep learning algorithms to simulate a city, including buildings, roads, lane markers, traffic signs, and even trees and bushes. 
It allows manufacturers to run thousands of different scenarios based on various geographic locations and driver behaviors and sharing the road with other users. So manufacturers can hone in on the right iteration before going out on the road to validate the simulation. And that is going to greatly accelerate the development of autonomous cars. Coming up next, John responds to your questions and comments in You Said It. Lighter, safer, stronger, quieter, and more sustainable. Tell us where you need to go and we'll help you get there. Dow Automotive Systems. We don't succeed unless you do. Here's the part of the show where I get to answer some of your questions and listen to some of your comments. A number of you reacted to our report that millennials no longer rely on AM FM radio for hearing new music. and They listen more to YouTube, Pandora, and Spotify. That report predicted that automakers could delete radios in cars in another five years or so. Don B says, AM FM radio is killing itself. If you listen to a station for four hours, you will hear the same songs two times or more. There are very few live DJs left. Most broadcasts are done by computer, so radio is slitting its own throat. But Roger T says, I think deleting FM is a mistake. As a dad of two Gen Y kids, I will comment that even though our vehicles have smartphone connectivity, they still listen to the radio, especially on their short trips. A number of you wonder who might buy FCA. Lex wonders, what about PSA and an unnamed partner buying FCA and keeping Jeep and Ram while converting Chrysler manufacturing to produce PSA slash partner vehicles for North America? Meanwhile, Ziggy wants to know, what would it take for the workers at FCA North America to buy the company themselves and go back to just having it be Chrysler. I don't think either of these scenarios are going to happen. First off, I would estimate that it's going to take at least $26 billion to buy Fiat Chrysler. That's about a 20% markup above its current market cap. PSA has a lot on its plate right now. It has to absorb Opal, and it's already announced its 10-year plan to return to the American market, primarily through ride-sharing. I don't think PSA wants to pour that much money into growing its footprint, and there's no way the FCA employees could come up with that amount of money. Buzzard has a question about electric cars. EV credits. Is there any chance that the government will renew or up the amount of credits? I don't think that's going to happen, Buzzard. Uncle Sam is already on the hook for about $15 billion in EV subsidies. You know, that's nearly the size of NASA's budget, and there doesn't seem to be much appetite in Congress for pouring billions more into subsidies. Besides, those subsidies were enacted to kickstart the EV market, and that's already been accomplished. Victor West saw our report that sales of the Porsche Cayenne and Macan dropped more than 30% last month in the U.S. market. Could the lack of the diesel in the U.S. market cause the decline of the Porsche SUVs, he wants to know? Well, I don't think that's the case. Sales of the Macan are actually up for the year. The Cayenne, however, is down for the year, and it wasn't until August that sales of both of them took a nosedive. And finally, Bill has a comment about autonomous cars. I really wasn't all that excited about autonomous vehicles until I heard about the Domino's Ford pizza delivery. Now I can order a pizza and not have to worry about tipping the driver. No more awkward moments of asking the guy if he has changed for a dollar. Oh, you wicked people. And I want to thank you for adding a little levity to our day. So keep those comments and questions coming. We really like going through them. But with that, we come to the end of this week's worth of reports. Thank you for making Autoline Daily a part of your day, and we will see you back here again on Monday.
Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.